Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. So after an entertaining trip to Las Vegas, we come home to a conehead. Because uh, the conehead ripped her scabbies open again. She keeps doing dummy. this. She keeps doing it. And it's getting old. She's had to have that cone on in one way or another for at least a month now. We bought it right after we came back from Vegas last time in July. That's So that's two months. Two full months, she said, the cone on and off, yes. We need to make this the end, because yeah. she's just... We took her to the vet, cost us a buttload of money, and yeah, she got her wounds snipped and yeah, cleaned. They clean them suckers. And cut the edges. Yeah. No wonder she was so upset. They had to sedate her, because she's high energy, and that probably hurt like a mother. Yep. And so now she's got the cone on and all sorts of medication that apparently you have to wear gloves to put on her. Yeah, she's kind of a mess. But she's such a good girl about taking her treatment. Yes. She really is. But, you know, I, as you know, have been complaining about wanting to lose weight, wanting to lose weight, and wanting to lose weight, and wanting to lose weight. And now I finally feel like I've got the bull by the horns and I've got my old swagger back okay and not being a complete nazi because i'm given the chance to you know interchange things and whatever but man the fitness industry lies to people through the nose and it's why people get taken advantage of okay i mean i've got an article here it's called um Five Complete Lies the Fitness Industry Tells You to Make More Money. And it's by Alyssa Atkinson. Okay, tell me the lies. So, number one is, you shouldn't eat big meals. So, they tell you to eat six meals a day, don't eat just three meals a day. But the truth is, it doesn't really matter if it's three or six. It matters what it is that you're eating, not how many times you're eating. Okay. Um, some people eat only three meals because they're busy and they don't have time for six meals. And it does happen. So that's one. Then the next one is you must drink a protein shake after you work out. Okay. And well, it's really not true. And it's actually better to like eat real food after you work out than a protein shake. Okay. That's interesting. But it's just convenient for a busy person to just grab a protein shake. Makes sense. But it isn't a must. Then you need a personal trainer to get fit. Okay. Well, you really just have to eat well and move your body. But I think where the personal trainer comes in is like any other coach. Accountability. I think that's the key there. So it's not that you need one. It's that it's helpful. Yeah. And then they tell you that you can drop 10 pounds in five days or a week or two weeks. It takes a 3,500 calorie deficit to lose a single pound. Correct. How are you going to create enough deficit to lose 10 pounds? You'd have to to have a 35,000 calorie deficit in two weeks. Now... Lots of people lose 10 pounds in their first two weeks of doing something, though, because they lose all their crazy water. Water weight. Yeah. Exactly. That's not real weight loss. So, 
you know, then there's like stories too of like, um, in order to support this five pounds in five days BS, somebody took like syrup and put some something else into the syrup to make it cha taste different from syrup. And then they made people take like um, a tablespoon of that three times a day to hmm. lose weight. Well, Wasn't that the gonna... master cleanse crap where you Something put like maple that. syrup and lemon juice yeah. and cayenne pepper yeah. and water? That's yeah. all you drank for yeah. like four days? And then number five, the being skinny equates to healthy. Okay. People in the fitness industry, they profit off of your body insecurities. So, you know, look at an Olympic athlete. They might have great muscles, no body fat, but they also work out super hard for hours every day. OK, mm -hmm. um, but you can't really get those physiques. It's impossible. You don't have the average person doesn't have the energy and time to put into it. Or the genetics said. So, you know, because you can't realistically get there and you don't have shredded abs, it doesn't mean you're not healthy. You're working out. You're, you know, my gosh, just walking supposedly increases your lifespan just walking on a regular basis makes sense so you know so i think the main thing is that people need to remember that there's no one product that's going to like magically make them lose weight that just doesn't exist seems reasonable and it's kind of interesting because people wonder uh, like i wonder all the time how do people fall for these scams well i can tell you from trying a lot of different supplements that I've been scammed before. Well, because the scams always get somebody who's in great shape and they pay them to be the spokesperson for them or they pay a doctor to be the spokesperson for them. And I'm putting finger quotes around the word doctor. And then people are like, oh, I have to trust doctors and I should trust this Hollywood celebrity who always looks great about what makes them look great. You know what some fitness companies do? They'll hire like a man that's in great shape, like muscular and ripped and like hardly any body fat and pay him to get and fat. And then they pay him to get fat. And then they're done. They just say he went, this was his before picture. Then he started taking our pills and this is his after picture. Right. It's really the other way around. And that is one of the scuzzy truths of the fitness industry. It's kind of gross. And that is why, you know, some companies have all of their ingredients tested. And by the way, you can always tell which companies those actually are because when they're on podcasts or radio shows, they're like citing how, you know, we have better um, consistency of X, Y, or Z than 99.9% .9 of all supplement companies. The only way they know that is they got the report from a lab telling them that, you know, and but... By being tested, you, the consumer, can actually see are there going to be benefits because at that point, it's just pure science. Does right. this amount of this substance do this? Yes or no? Right. Most times what it is is the count on the buzzword. So like they were making a point on one of the videos I was watching about biotin, right? And how biotin is definitely one of those things that your body does not store. So, you know... Let's say that six grams of biotin is the best you can store in your body. Okay. It doesn't care if you give it 100 grams. It's only going to store six. And you pee out the rest. Yeah. And that's the same for all vitamins. And so at the same time, what people do is they'll give you like a gummy that has biotin in it. And it has like a milligram of biotin in it. You would need to take so many of those pills to actually fix a deficiency that it's never going to work but the reason they sell is because the word biotin is something that people know helps your fingernails and your hair makes sense so they buy it based off the buzzword but you got to look at the dosage because if it requires six grams in order to make that change and you're only getting a, a you know a milligram you're a bit off it's like that one supplement that i take I did all of the research to find out how much of it you're supposed to take. And then I look at all the the companies that are marketing towards people with the same condition, the same supplement right. to those people, and they're giving you like 
200 milligrams. And really, you're supposed to take a gram a day. And they're telling you, you just need to take 200 milligrams. Well, they're, it's not going to help. Like, and I, most people don't do the amount of research that I did before I bu- picked the supplement I wanted to take. Well, and a lot of people get it in their head that that supplement is going to work. Right. And then they make it work. It's no different than crazy diets. You know, you can go, you want to go keto? Go keto. You want to go paleo? Go paleo. You want to go, I'm only eating a banana a day for the next 30 days? Go for it. I once did what was called the velocity diet. You just drink protein shakes. I lost so much fat off of my body, it wasn't even funny. And that's why I kicked myself that I let it go back the other way. I can't do that. It's bad for my longevity. But The point I'm trying to make is that everybody's different. What they find, you know, important to them, et cetera, and what works for them, et cetera. But if you do something drastic, I don't care what it is, it's going to work for a period of time. Right. And if it's a healthy way to do it, it'll probably work for a long period of time. And if it's an unhealthy way to do it, you will find yourself in a whole world of hurt very shortly. And that's why I would rather know what the person did over six months to a year rather than what they did in the first 30 days. Because the first 30 days, I did the carnivore diet for 30 days. I did the velocity diet for 30 days. Restricting yourself to one type of food for 30 straight days is not easy. And I'm going to tell you something. The velocity diet was actually easier than the carnivore diet because you'd need to eat out. And then you feel like shit because you're wasting money getting potatoes and vegetables and bread and all this stuff. And all you're eating is the meat. That felt like a total waste of money. With the protein shake one, you just fucking put a protein shake together and down it. You can take it with you and your family can have dinner. And you down a protein shake. That's your meal. Done. Finished. Over. And then Every- you get to sit there and smell their steak. And it is what it is. How unpleasant. It's part of why I think people do these crazy diets, though, is to get stronger. Mental fortitude. Okay. Come on. That's really what it is. You look at you look at bodybuilders. Yes, most have some help with some pharmaceuticals, but even then they have to do the work. And that work requires some mental toughness. It just does. I mean, not everybody can do it. It's a fact. Not everybody can get there. If it was so easy, everybody could get there. The dog could get there. She's already there. She might get there one day. She's kind of bodybuilder built ish. She's already Wish, there. Nish, nish. She's, She's a bodybuilder and her feet are ticklish. This is what I've learned today. <laughs> well, to finish off, we'll double back to the the beast named Bree. Otherwise oh, known as Breast. And Breastosaurus. And, and the moose on the loose. Grumpy Dog. Saurus. Yes, that's her other nickname, Saris, right? She has a lot of nicknames. She, well, all our animals do. They have 10,000 names because I love to give them new names every day. She has become super needy because of all this, too. Yes, she sure has. So that means we probably should stop and pay her some attention. On that note, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.